I also have a multi-core demonstration. And the multi-core demonstration is a little bit more interesting. I actually have two separate virtual boards, just as I had before. These are my virtual machines. VxWorks and Linux, same thing. I'm now running it on an Intel Core 2 Quad. I'm only using two cores, um, but it's, it's a quad-core processor. And I'm configuring every operating system, every virtual board, to its own core. And this is something that in, at Wind River we call supervised AMP, supervised AMP for asynch asymmetric multiprocessing. The hypervisor really is used here to configure the two different operating systems and really limit the operating systems to only look at that one specific core. The other interesting part of this demonstration is that I have defined a MIPSI channel between virtual board 1 and virtual board 2. MIPSI stands for multi-operating system inter-process communication. It's a very fast uh, intercore communication channel um, that I can define for the use of my applications between my different virtual boards. And in this case, I'm actually using it for debugging. What I can do is I can run, since VxWorks doesn't have an Ethernet card, I can still debug it if I use the MIPSI channel and I will set up a debugging chain uh, th with Workbench through the Ethernet card on Wind River Linux going through MIPSI actually debugging um, VxWorks on the second virtual on the first virtual board. So with that as introduction, what we'll do is we'll switch to our host environment. Um, I've taken the liberty of uh, actually already booting the board, and what you can see here is um, the hypervisor starting to boot. It initializes itself, uh, and then it prints some information, some diagnostic information about the chip that we're using. It's a core two quad, uh, say Q6600 at 2.54 gigahertz, a whole bunch of features that the chip has, and then it starts the hypervisor, creates different threads for the hypervisor proper, for the hypervisor itself, and then it starts to fire off uh, Linux and VxWorks. You can see here, indeed, VxWorks is starting, and here's an, our VxWorks image again. Again, this is VxWorks running on top of the hypervisor on one of the cores of this processor, but at this point in time, I don't know which core it is. So I can do the same thing as I did uh, before I can start my hypervisor debug shell, I can ask for a job list, and here I can see my hypervisor management th uh, threads, um, my debugger, that's the E shell here, VxWorks, uh, context 13 running on CPU 0, Linux, context 12 running on CPU 1, and CPU 2 and 3, which are core 3 and 4 respectively. Uh, there's nothing running on it, just the, uh, the, the hypervisor management threads. Um, so here I can see I'm actually uh, assigning the operating systems uh, to one dedicated core, which of course gives me the best performance. In the previous situation, um, I was actually sharing the uh, processor between the two different operating systems, which um, gives me fair, fair performance, but I have to realize that when I develop my software that I'm running uh, two different operating systems on one core, right? It's the same as, as, as if you're doing um, multi-threading on that core, except for the fact that the threads have now been replaced with operating systems. And then inside of the operating systems, of course, you can do further multi-threaded programming. Okay, so there we go. That's how VX works. Um, I actually have configured my Intel box to have a um, two different serial ports. So let me switch the um, the cable here to the different port here. Now I'm actually uh, running uh, connected to uh, serial port number two, uh, which is assigned to Linux. So this is Wind River Linux. Uh, with all of its um, its, its, its capabilities. Uh, you can see that I have a user mode agent running here and I have network as well. So I can go from uh, my host machine, which is this window here, um, 128. I can ping my Linux box and I get my Linux box uh, coming back to me. Okay, so that also means that I can connect my debug agent and that will come up and um, so this now is a debug agent connecting to the Linux machine, uh, the Linux instance running on the power on the Intel, and I can do the same thing as I did on the previous example. I can make a very quick um, Linux sample project with Hello World. I have to make sure that it has the right compiler, which it does. So then I can build my project, and I can debug my project to make sure I have the right instance here and it downloads the binary to the target it starts it and it breakpoints here and you can see that this is a breakpoint for a particular debugger 
and if you pay close attention here, the icons are blue, and there's a little zero here, which indicates this is my uh, my instance zero of the debugger. This will become important when I start debugging VxWorks in a second. Uh, so if I go and I go back here to my Linux instance, I can do a PS, and now you'll see that my hello world here is here. That's all very interesting, but what I really want to do is I want to debug VxWorks. And what we can do, I talked about this MIPSI channel before, so I can enable the MIPSI channel uh, and I can uh, run something that we call Wind River Proxy, and now I can connect to VxWorks, which doesn't have an Ethernet card, but I can connect my, uh, my target agent, and um, that will connect to Wind River Linux first, and then through Wind River Linux, um, through the MIPSI to VxWorks. So once that is connected here, I can now do a new project here, make it a VxWorks downloadable kernel, sorry, make, make a new example, make it a VxWorks downloadable kernel module sample project. I can select the same hello world, but now it will run as a VxWorks kernel module in the VxWorks um, instance here. Make sure I set the right compiler. Uh, build options. A lot of different compilers installed here. I need my Pentium 4. There we go. Now I can compile this, build. That will take a second. Two seconds. And then I can debug this instance here. Debug VxWorks kernel task. I have to make sure that this is the right instance, this is perfect. Select my start symbol main and debug. And here we go. So now you can actually see that this is my second debugger. There's now a red little arrow with uh, with a small digit one here because in my windows here I actually have two separate debuggers. I have my Linux that out and my, uh, my VxWorks that out. Now I could of course take the cable out and plug it back into the uh, uh, the other serial port, which will give me the, the window for um, for VxWorks, but that's a bit uh, a bit rude. Um, what I can also do is I can go to Target Tools and open a Target Console. And uh, here's my Target Console. So what you can see here: uh, Target Console, serial port, multiple different debuggers, both running Hello World at C, both single stepping through it, one running Linux, one running VxWorks on different cores in a multi-core processor. So I was going to uh, keep the demonstration to this here. Um, I hope this was uh, informative for you. If you want more deeper information, uh, feel free to contact a, um, a Wind River representative uh, close to you. He's, he'll be happy to engage in a deeper discussion on you with you on how you can use the Wind River hypervisor and the Wind River multi-core software solutions in general to build your next generation embedded systems. Thank you very much and have a great day.